Hey there, everybody. I'm here with your first chapter Friday for Patron Saints of Nothing because today we're getting all caught up. So, the first chapter is kind of more of a prologue and it's kind of also a flashback, but it gives you an idea um, into what our protagonist is like. It was a day of soil, sunlight, and smoke. Curtains, thin as bedsheets, glowed gold as roosters, called out from the backyard on the other side of concrete walls and single-pane windows. On the floors of the room my father and his two brothers had shared growing up, my mom held me as I held a lifeless puppy and cried. The oscillating fan hummed, blowing warm air on us every few seconds. I was ten, and it was my first time back in the country where I'd been born. A few days earlier, my family had driven the 11 hours along frightening roads from Manila to Lolo and Lola's house in the Bicol region. When we arrived, we found that their dog, an unnamed mongrel chained to the cacao tree out back, had just given birth to a litter of puppies. Only one lived. The mother refused to care for him, so I had taken the task upon myself. I held him close to keep him warm. I tried to feed him by hand, dipping my finger into a bowl of evaporated milk and then offering a drop to the puppy's impossibly small mouth. However, the puppy would not drink the milk. Maybe because of the grief from losing his brothers and sisters, or maybe because of his mother's rejection. Whatever the reason, his breathing grew shallow. His movements slowed. Each time he blinked, his eyes remained closed longer and longer until they never reopened. At that point in my life, I had encountered death only in fiction. I had heard about other people's relatives dying, but I had never seen death up close. I never held it. Listen, Mom said in that moment, hugging me closer. So I did. Baby birds chirped just outside the window. One thing dies and another is born. Maybe the puppy's soul now has wings. Gradually, I calmed down and stopped crying, but I still felt heavy with sadness as the warmth left the tiny ball of brown and gray fur still cradled in my arms. When I finally stepped outside, almost all my Filipino titas and titos left. Not in a mean way, I think, but more like it was amusing that a dog's death affected me so much because it was nothing to them. Another day, another dog. My cousins did not need to have someone stroke their hair and reassure them that death was part of life. It wasn't long before the family's attention drifted away like the smoke from the garbage being burned a few houses down. My brother and my sister resumed the card game of speed that they'd been playing. My dad and Lolo returned their attention to their bottles of San Miguel. My mom gave my shoulder one last squeeze and then went over to the outdoor kitchen to help Tita Chato, Tita Ami, and Lola finish preparing lunch. Tito Danilo rested a hand on the top of my head and spoke of finding comfort in God's love, while Tito Maining told me to stop crying and took away the puppy's limp little body. He returned a few minutes later, brushing his palms as if he had just taken out the trash. He moved to pet the puppy's mother as he walked past, but she shied away. He continued on, took out a new bottle of beer from the cooler, and sat down next to Dad and Lolo. Tito Danilo stood by in awkward silence for a few more moments before joining them, leaving me there alone. But I was not alone for long. My cousin June walked over and hugged me. I'm sad too, Puya J, he said, using the older brother designation, which never seemed right. <clears throat> I had been born only three days before him, and besides that, he was one of those people who moved through the world as if he had been around for a long time, an old soul, as they say. I almost asked June what his father had done with my puppy, what he had done with its brothers and sisters the previous day, but I didn't. We can only handle so much truth at any given moment, I suppose. So instead, I said nothing. He looked at me with sympathetic eyes, eyes so brown they were almost black. Do you want to go inside and read comics? I nodded, grateful for the chance to escape from everyone without being by myself. He threw his arm over my shoulders. We went inside. We read comics. A few days later, the vacation ended. I flew back to pine trees, overcast skies, and a Michigan winter that could sputter till May. My tan faded. My tongue forgot the taste of Tocino and Tagalog. 
I stepped, out, stepped outside of Chinelas and back into my suburban life as if I had never left. Patron saints of nothing. Enjoy. <laughs>